All right, so in this video, we are going to do kind of like a Q&A answer of a question that I just had come in on my YouTube channel. And this has to do with native low latency monitoring, otherwise known as Green Z, uh, with tape style monitoring in Studio One. So this is the combination that I use when I'm working in Studio One. I've been using it since version 3.5 when they introduced native low latency monitoring. And I've been using a Personas Quantum pretty much since it very first came out. Even, even before they were out, I was running it uh, in alpha and beta mode and I was still recording projects with it. So let's talk about my settings really quickly. Okay, device block size, 32 samples. Processing dropout protection set to medium. With these settings, I get a total round trip latency of 2.5 milliseconds, which is amazing. And it is rock stable. It, I've never had an issue. I've never had a dropout. I could even go lower if I wanted. I could go to 16 samples. And at 16 samples, we are literally getting 1.5 milliseconds of round trip latency. I have tried to record at 16 samples. At 16 samples, some of the artists I work with, it was so low that it was actually out of phase with the, what they were hearing in their own head. I had to invert the polarity and it was awkward. So most of the time, I just end up leaving things at 32 samples and I've never heard anybody ever complain about latency. So those are the settings. Now, the next thing you need to do is just need to enable Green Z and you're in business. Now, let's talk about the monitoring mutes playback. Okay, so if I have this deselected, which I believe is the default way that Studio One works, and I was to record enable this channel, we're not hearing anything on this channel yet, right? I've record enabled it, we can see the meters moving, but we're not actually hearing it. Now, if I then monitor enable this, now we can hear it. So we hear both of these together, and in fact, you'll hear them flanging against my voiceover mic and what's coming through the DAW. And you can see if I disable Green Z, you, you see we have that latency, but the minute I enable it, it pretty much goes away. Now, this particular setting, that's all well and good. If, for example, you wanted to record a take, you, you record enable this and you monitor enable it and you could record a take from beginning to end. And if you wanted to do any punch-ins, it would get awkward because you would need a way to hear back what you were playing before and then punch in and then hear back the other stuff. This is where the tape style monitoring comes in. So I'm going to enable tape style monitoring. And what this basically does is it engages an auto input monitoring style of a workflow. Now, when you record enable the channel or the track in Studio One, channel in the console, track in the arrange window, then when my transport is in stop mode, I'm actually hearing my live input. Now, if I press play, I'm not hearing anything. But if there was something on the actual track that was recorded, I would hear that. So how does it work? If record enabled with tape style monitoring on, then when you press play, you are gonna hear what's on the track or nothing at all. When you actually drop into record mode, you will hear your live mic. And when you're stopped, you will hear your live mic. Okay, so let's do a punch in now. So I'm just gonna drop right into record mode. We're gonna hear everything. And let's say that as we approach to bar five, I'm gonna leave it alone because I need to punch in. And then we're gonna come back in here and let's say that I just kind of phased out and I forgot that area. Okay, so now I push stop, I'm hearing my live input again, but if I press play, I'm gonna hear what I had previously recorded and I won't be able to hear my mic. We're gonna hear everything and let's say that as we approach to bar, so the question now is how do we punch in? In the question over here, they said, if I want to punch in on a guitar track if I'm working on and I want to hear it up until my punch in spot, what settings do I need? Okay, so let's mimic that. There's two ways we can do this. The first way, let's drop in manually, okay? So I'm just going to pick a point, give myself a random point of pre-roll. I'm going to actually, let me do this on the actual GUI so you can see. I'm going to press play and then I'm going to drop in to record mode by clicking this, or I could use a number pad as well. Maybe I'll use the asterisk and number pad. And then I will click it again when I wanna be out of record mode. Leave it alone because I need to punch in. Okay, so now I'm punched in over here and I'll punch out right here. And then we're gonna come back in here and let's say that I just, so that's one way that we can do it and that's manually. Now that's all well and good if you're recording somebody else and especially it also takes a little bit of time to get your timing right. Let's make sure that I didn't cut anything off. So this looks pretty good. And over here, that looks pretty good as well. Do a little bit of a data zoom. Now, there's one particular setting that comes in really handy here when you're doing this, and I would recommend turning it on. You go to your preferences, advanced, and then you want to go to audio. 
Pre-record audio input, set this to 10 seconds, two seconds, five seconds, 30 seconds, whatever you need. Because what happens if you accidentally were a little bit late on pushing record, then you'll actually miss a little bit of the intro. But if you have this setting on, I can actually pull this back. So if I've recorded something, it's no problem. I can pull that back. Also worth noting that I would rather cut this off too late than cut it off too early because I would love to see the equivalent feature for the tail end, like a post record buffer, but like I can't pull this back any further. This is where I recorded to and it doesn't go past that. So just, I've had it happen to me before where I've been a little too, I guess, jumped the gun a little bit and I dropped into record mode and I, I tried to drop out so that I didn't accidentally cut something off, but I cut off the end of the performance. So that's not really good. So that's doing it manually. Now there's another way that you can do it as well if you're recording yourself and that is by using the auto punch mode. So let me undo and let's bring ourselves back here. If you go down here and you select auto punch, we now have the ability to basically set the DAW to do this for us. And the way that we do this is by using the loop brace at the top here. So what I'll do is I'll set my loop brace, I'll set my in point. I'm gonna hold shift to relieve myself from the grid. Maybe we'll go to somewhere about here. And in this case, let's use the same tip we did the last time. As opposed to accidentally cutting myself off early, let's say that the, the out point of the recording was here, but I ended up coming to here and then I lost it. Uh, what I would rather do is, is, is click, hold, and drag this. And I'll set it like right, right pretty much to right to the end point, even though I'm going to try my best to match the timing. Now, with auto punch enabled, with our loop brace set, and this is the important part, our loop is not active because otherwise this wouldn't just engage loop recording. It would go over and over. The loop actually has to be deactivated, but the length of the actual loop region is what's used for the auto punch range. Now, in this case, basically just dial your cursor back to wherever you want. And in this case, we would actually press record to engage the recording. And even though we've recorded, or even though we want to play back, because it hasn't passed through the loop brace yet for the auto punch, it's not going to record and we will hear back what was recorded previously. I'll show you right now. Let's go ahead and push record. And in this case, it does everything automatically. It punches in and punches out. I'm gonna leave it alone because I need to punch in. So now I'm gonna do my recording here and I'm gonna try to get out right here. Then we're gonna come back in here and let's say that I, now if I mess that up, I could just do it again. And then like I know, because we enabled our pre-record, I can pull this back a little bit and kind of refine this edit. And because we extended our loop brace out, Looks like we can pull this back a little bit and get like a perfectly clean edit, but that is how you handle punch-ins and you'd be able to hear what you had recorded previously up to the punch-in point. You hear the live input while you're actually recording and then post the punch-in point or the punch-out point, you will hear your recorded performance again. Auto punch, set your loop brace, you're good to go. Anyways, I hope this helps and we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.